your th tell me how you utilize cycloplegia, you know, um, especially in a situation where you might be trying to identify pseudomyopia. Um, do you do you think all of these patients should be cycloplegia? Do you think cyclopentylate is the chosen one? Can you use tropicamide? Can you just kind of talk a little bit about your thoughts on cycloplegia? I can. I will tell you that I do very little cycloplegia, cycloplegia or doing cycloplegia with patients. I don't use it a lot because I have found that at least my prescribing and my uh, ability to determine maybe a near lens and even looking at uh, how I can certainly figure out if someone uh, needs either less minus or more plus uh, for distance, that if I do my testing in the way that I do, if I uh, push, sort of push plus, not, not minus, um, I do occasionally have patients where, you know, you add a quarter and then a minute later they're more myopic and they want more and, you know, would it be helpful to cycloplege them? Well, again, it may show you that there's more plus in the system, but the question is when that wears off, where are they gonna be? And so I'm always wanting to try to prescribe for them in a way that reduces the dependency on the minus, does not over minus them. And if anything, those are likely patients where I'm gonna wanna try to get them into as much plus at near as is appropriate for them as well. Um, and also, perhaps, if nothing else, add in some accommodative uh, activities that they can do at home, even if they don't come into a formal vision therapy program, because that's likely uh, what's going on. Um, I do know that in a lot of the research, they're talking about cycloplegian uh, patients in order to look at or more fully look at the changes in myopia. But they also now talk about the fact that maybe the level of myopia that we measure is not as important a measure as measuring axial length. So the question is, if we're going to look at axial length, how much myopia they're showing at that moment in time, knowing that those measures are not consistent, even by a quarter diopter, even from morning till night in some patients, you know, are we going to become less dependent on the need to say, well, if we don't measure with cycloplegia, it's not good enough. It may be important for research, but but on a practical level, I don't find that it's terribly useful because, you know, it's sort of like um, when you when you talk about a, ch a young child and you cycloplegia them and you find out they're, a, you know, plus six and you go, well, maybe I'll just give them a plus four. It's like, you know, the rules, the rules of what, how you're going to change that or cut that or what's going to happen when those drops wear off, it just doesn't seem to, to have a good way of telling what that should be. Um, and so I try to do it in as most natural a situation, a natural way as possible. And I do think you can do it with, by adding plus as you do it. You can look with your retina scope and see uh, how stable it is. I, so I don't, I don't use cycloplegia very often.